Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to another episode of Page to Screen. I know, page to screen, who thought I was still doing that? It's taken me a long while, I know, but that is because this episode is on Moby Dick and that is a very long book to read and the adaptations are very long adaptations to watch, so I'm sorry, thank you for bearing with me on this one. In this series what I do is read or reread a classic book and then I watch all of the film and TV adaptations that have been of it and compare it for you in a video. So there will obviously be spoilers for Moby Dick throughout this video just to give a recap of the plot. Um, Moby Dick is written by Ishmael who is a young guy who wants to go whaling. He travels to Nantucket. While he is there he is roomed with a harpooner called Queequeg who is described as a cannibal. They both join the whaling ship the Pequod which is captained by Captain Ahab um, and then halfway through their trip Captain Ahab tells everybody that actually they are not just hunting for whales, what they are doing is searching for Moby Dick, the great white whale which took his leg off and he wants vengeance for that act. Then we spend the whole of the book searching for Moby Dick. Moby Dick does not turn up until the last few chapters of the book where they chase him and you know it all ends in tears, everybody dies. The way that Moby Dick is written is very interesting. So you've got a lot of plot right at the beginning of the book, you have a lot of plot right at the end, and then the middle we get Ishmael just discussing whaling, just discussing different types of whales, different types of whaling ships. It's almost like non-fiction essays on the process of whaling and you lose quite a lot of plot. Um, and so I was really interested to see how this book was going to be adapted for the screen and what happened is what I assumed would happen is that most adaptations ignore all of that <laughs> section and they kind of flesh out the story themselves. So I started right back in 1926 with a silent movie adaptation called The Sea Beast. This was two hours long and it's, I mean, I guess it's based on Moby Dick. It's not really an adaptation. The whole first half of the movie was Captain Ahab's backstory that he had a lover who he went to see and his evil brother tried to take her away and we got lots of scenes of them in the Caribbean and sailors singing. What I have found when I watch these silent movies is that it's interesting as a study of early cinema. It's not really interesting as a study of Moby Dick or book adaptations because the aim of the game is not to have a very faithful adaptation of the novel. The idea of these films is just to entertain and it doesn't matter, they're just using Moby Dick as a source material and they're just doing their own story, they're just showing a load of songs just as long as the audience are entertained. So this was fine, actually some of the shots were quite impressive for the era um, but it's not really, I mean it's not really an adaptation of Moby Dick so. <laughs> The next adaptation that I watched was a 1956 film starring Gregory Peck as Captain Ahab and this was a very interesting adaptation. It's probably the closest one that I got to watch uh, to the original story arc. We continuously had a voiceover of Ishmael narrating the story and what is interesting about this adaptation is that they've kept Moby Dick strictly to the finale of the film. Most other adaptations take a more modern approach to this and they have Moby Dick popping up in various parts of the film um, or have him be the whale that the crew chase on their first voyage. But this film is just a really basic, almost like bread and butter adaptation of Moby Dick. Gregory Peck as Captain Ahab is uh, yeah, pretty spot on, I think, to what Captain Ahab is like in the book. He's very, very intense. I mean, he's described in the book as being monomaniacal, and I think he definitely gets that right. Um, every so often, the camera just pans over to where Ahab is, and he's just standing on the bow of the ship, just staring <laughs> menacingly, and you just want to be like, chill out, Ahab, a little bit. But that is how he's described in the book, so in that sense, I think it's very effective. What this film doesn't get quite right, in my opinion, are the characters. It does very well at sticking to the plot. I find a lot of the characters come across very wooden. One thing that I didn't really like, and this is a recurring issue for me, is the representation of Queequeg. So the book itself is an old book. Um, for its time, I felt like its representation of people of colour is was actually fairly progressive. I mean Ishmael's description of people is actually very respectful, he's very interested in other people's religions, he doesn't um, automatically assume that it's lesser because they're not Christian or because they're not white, but at the same time it still has that I guess imperialist patronising descriptions of people. I mean it's not great, it's a very old-fashioned book and so it is going to have some problematic elements to it. Um, 
And I mean, this film, it's a fairly old film, so I guess it just follows through, really. I mean, the representation of Queequeg is very much like the noble savage, and he's very silent. He's got a bit of a magical aura around him, really, which I felt like didn't bring out his humanity. I didn't really feel much humanity in any anyone, really. But I did like the whale chases in this film. They do that really well when they find their first whale and they're shooting along on their little boats. Like, that was very exciting. Um, the end was very good as well because I think there was a definite sense that it wasn't just Ahab going after Moby Dick. There was actually a very obvious purposefulness in Moby Dick when he came to destroying the ship and destroying Ahab so I liked that it felt like they were equal rivals to it to an extent. So an interesting adaptation of the book itself I wouldn't say it's a fantastic film um, but it would be good to watch if you really enjoy the story of Moby Dick and you want to see that portrayed um, on screen then I think this one does the job. Now we have a jump in time of adaptations from 1956 to 1998 to a made-for-TV series starring Patrick Stewart. I think there are some other films of Moby Dick. I've definitely found some references uh, to films in the 70s that were made, but I could not for the life of me find them on YouTube or like DVDs. So there may be some that I've missed here. But this adaptation is, is pretty good. I mean, Patrick Stewart, predictably, is a fantastic Ahab because of course he is. His interpretation is quite similar to Gregory Peck's, but he fleshes him out, he gives him a little bit more purpose, there's a bit more subtext there, and I think that's what this adaptation tries to do overall, is actually flesh out the story a bit. Um, I don't really like where this adaptation goes in that sense. It's very good to watch, I mean it's very well acted, I've got no problems with the adaptation in and of itself, but when you're comparing it to Moby Dick, and uh, I, I just, I had a couple of issues. My first issue, again, is Queequeg. They've gone a bit of a different way with Queequeg here, and the actor himself is a Pacific Islander. I just found the representation quite patronising, and he's a little bit kind of lovable and jovial and silly, and he just doesn't seem like a full human being, really. I mean, him and Ishmael are, like, quite good friends, but he tends to kind of go at people and scare them and be like, oh, I'm a savage, aren't I scaring you? And find it really hilarious. And I just find it a little bit... Like, I, I just don't think that's who Queequeg was. I didn't really enjoy that. And then the other issue that I had was the pacing. So they do spend a large part of this adaptation searching specifically for Moby Dick. They're not hunting really any other whales. They end up in the Antarctic at one point and they get stuck in ice and it just sort of goes off on this tangent. Um, and it means that the plot is very much at, at a very similar level. So they're not going on different adventures, they're just searching for Moby Dick. And you get the first mate, Starbuck, who is just pleading with Captain Ahab, saying, oh, please, can we stop searching? Can we just go home? But that conversation gets repeated quite a lot, so it just feels like very one track. And as much as I love Patrick Stewart's interpretation of Captain Ahab, I think that's fantastic. I think the rest of the plot and the, the rest of the characters I just found that a little bit lacking, which I think is a shame. The next film that I watched was from 2010, and this was a modernised version of Moby Dick, which was hilarious. Our main character, Ishmael, is a woman, and her first line is, Call me Michelle, and she's Gabrielle from Xena. I was just like, this is brilliant. So Gabrielle, call me Michelle, is a marine biologist who specialises in whale calls. She's out on her little boat one day with her assistant Pip and this huge submarine turns up and Captain Ahab and his crew kidnap her, take her on board so that she can help him hunt Moby Dick. Um, and it's do you know what? The acting is terrible, the direction isn't great, but the writing is, is really good and I really appreciate how much this adaptation has been thought through, even down to really little details so that Michelle and Pip's boat is called The Coffin um, and at the end of the book Ishmael is saved by floating on a coffin. It's just little things like that um, when they're trying to torpedo Moby Dick and at first they torpedo a squid and that happens in the book. There's even a bit, there's a whole chapter in Moby Dick which talks about the fact that Moby Dick is white and why that's very odd because normally white is associated with like angels and good things and you would say bad things, evil things are black and it's like this whole, I mean it's, it gets a bit racist this chapter but it goes on talking about how white is normally good and yet Moby Dick is evil and in this film uh, there's a one point where one of the black members of crew is talking to Pip and saying you know like he's white, I, I just find it weird that he's so bad and he's white and Pip's like I have no problem with believing that white can be evil. And it's just, I think that's really funny. 
I think that's great. The whole thing is way too over the top though. I mean, Moby Dick isn't a whale in this. He's a huge prehistoric dinosaur-like creature. And at the end, they kind of end up blowing up a whole island with their torpedoes. And it's just, it's all a little bit much. But I, I actually thought it was quite clever. Um, and I just think it's a shame that there's some poor writer somewhere who thought they had this brilliant idea. And, um, you know, it, they ended up with this, but it was fun. I quite enjoyed it. And the final adaptation that I watched was a made-for-TV movie from 2011 starring William Hurt as Captain Ahab and Ethan Hawke as Starbuck. This was my absolute favourite adaptation of Moby Dick and let me tell you why. Because when I read Moby Dick, I found the plot incredibly messy, hard to follow, I wasn't really emotionally invested in any of the characters. I mean, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just a very old-fashioned way of writing a novel um, and I didn't really connect with it. What this movie does is completely flesh out the characters. I mean, it gives people backstories and families um, that, that just don't exist. It completely fabricates scenes and relationships. But I loved that because I felt like I really cared. This is the best representation we have of Queequeg. He's just a normal human being. And what this does is balances Ishmael's fascination and ignorance of Queequeg and his culture with a, just a very normal, modern adaptation. This is exactly how you take problematic representations of people um, in old books and old literature and translate it into the modern day. This film does what the last two adaptations did and has Moby Dick kind of appear throughout um, the beginning half of the film. He doesn't just turn up right at the end. Um, but what it does a little bit differently is change Captain Ahab's reaction to this. So William Hurt is actually a very charismatic, very likeable Ahab. He really gets the crew on side. They are all for revenge on Moby Dick and they don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And right at the beginning they encounter Moby Dick and then he gets away and Ahab just laughs it off and he's like, he will be back. You know, we're destined, I'm gonna find him. Like he knows I'm here now. And it's just a very different reaction than Gregory Peck or Patrick Stewart's Ahabs would have had because they were so desperate um, in their pursuit that they couldn't have laughed it off. And I, you know, this isn't what Ahab's like in the book at all. It's a complete change of character. But this representation of him really works with the way they've then restructured the plot in this adaptation. So I just, I'm really on board with it. And I think it means you engage more as a viewer. I was more emotionally invested in the cast. Like I was sad when they died. Um, I don't care that it's not Herman Melville's writing, but like I said, I'm not a big fan of Moby Dick. So from my perspective, this is my favourite adaptation. This is the one I would recommend and I enjoyed watching the most. I am completely aware that if what you want in an adaptation of Moby Dick is a strict adaptation of the plot, then this is not going to be for you. So there we go. I would love to hear from you if you've seen any of these adaptations, if you've read Moby Dick and what you thought about it. I think I've seen clips of the Patrick Stewart one before when it's been on telly, um, but most of these other ones I'd never heard of or never watched. It was quite an interesting experience for me. This, unsurprisingly, is my last page to screen now of 2016. I'm going to start organising my schedule for next year. So let me know in the comments below if there's any books that you would like me to do a page to screen episode on and I will see you in my next video. Bye.